Okay, gentlemen, I have promised this video for an entire week. We are finally here. It is finally time. We are going to finally watch this video. The Decline of Blizzard. And that is why Warcraft 3 Reforged is Sucks. so terrible. I wish I never played a Blizzard game ever. That's about right. It too yeah, pains me to hear what Blizzard has become. What the fuck? You shall have your wish granted. It's Gandalf! Wait, no! Ah, what the fuck? Funny. My mind is completely blank now. I could have sworn wow. I was just upset about something, but strange. I don't Come. really sit with me. I have a tale for you. What the oh fuck is boy. this, dude? Is it about video games? The fuck you think it is? Of course we're What do you wish to tell me, old man? Well, long ago, when video games were much simpler, there existed the a company days. called Blizzard. Oh. Over time, Blizzard released several outstanding games that won not only awards, but the hearts of millions. Oh. With every new title, Blizzard managed this, to outdo dude. themselves. They, they were did. like Tom Brady, and for many years, yeah. Blizzard commanded great respect from gamers everywhere. It sure did. So, so what happened? The games were great, right? And, and they yeah. kept making them? they were awesome. I don't believe you can target a single mistake and say this is where it all went wrong. What is this? Although Blizzard was well loved by many gamers. Yeah, they were. At some point, something in them began to twist and contort until they were no longer the godlike beings we saw them as. There's got to be more to it than that. Yep. Tell me. Tell me everything. If you insist. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. I want to say, like, one big part of it is, like, yeah, Activision or whatever. But one big part of it is the fact that there were always people that complained about and hated Blizzard. It's just that the internet wasn't around. It's like everybody hates every game now. Everybody hates every company now. So there's a, there's a point where you need to realize that as well. 2010-ish? Yeah, I think that's about right. You hate every the game? decline yeah. of Blizzard is not a story. <coughs> that was weird. The decline of Blizzard is not a story about a successful business that is now failing, but no. rather a business that continuously fails its fans. Blizzard yeah, was one of my like favorite game developers of all time. Warcraft my love too, for dude. this company started yeah. when I was like five years old, Seven and I've me. given them more than a decade's worth of support. Blizzard, yeah. yes, me lord. Nintendo, Yahoo! Bungie. <laughs> These were the companies I knew of growing up as a kid. Exactly All fucking of them same. Were gods exactly in my same. eyes. Exactly same. Nothing makes me feel old quite like reminiscing on the first time I ever played a real computer game. Yeah, you know, dude. sitting there with Pajama Sam, Freddy Fish, Math Blaster, Dad bursts in. I had Math Blaster back in the day. My mom fucking made me get it because I like I didn't want to learn how to do math. Like I had all those old fucking games, man. Like I still have like the old uh, Duke Nukem uh, thing. Into the room, sits me down and says, "Son, yeah. you're almost five years old, but you've got a time lot of a manning man. up to do. It's time That's for right. a real game." Hands me StarCraft, and it was like oh, shit. I'm Harry Potter grabbing the wand that was destined for me. I have so many vivid memories Starcraft of too. playing the single-player campaign, custom games, loving the story, yeah. voice acting. You yeah. down the thunder. Now this was really away. good back in the day. Go this was high quality. About how awesome these games are. Yep. And hopefully I get to make a video about them someday. The storytelling was out of this world. But what really blew me away shit. were the cinematics. cinematics. Yep. That intro to Brood War. Uh. I love the cinematics back then. You guys need to understand like it's like it's so long ago. It's hard to remember, but the cinematics back then they were the same quality. They were better than the BFA cinematics because Blizzard was like so far ahead of everybody else. And I think as time has come, uh, time is like passed. 
other companies have caught up to Blizzard, but back then, there was like Blizzard cinematics, and then nobody, and then nobody, and then maybe other cinematics. Like, they were just so far above and beyond everybody else, it was fucking ridiculous. You have to remember, this was in the 90s that this shit came out. That intro so much, I parodied it in a horribly irrelevant video. StarCraft was so awesome beyond what Blizzard created themselves. Yeah. And the map editor allowed for unique custom games that anyone could play. I never did custom Around games. this time, my brother and I somehow got our hands on a copy of... Diablo. And holy hell, scares me shitless. So Mom, bloody and graphic. Yeah. Later I realized I in I therapy just how traumatized I was by the butcher. I yeah. can still hear his voice now. <laughs> Fresh meat. Addicting, yeah. satisfying, I never Diablo got a was a terrifying that, introduction to RPGs. I wish I did. Years later, Shapow! Too bad. Reign of Chaos! Showed off this the was power my game of right Blizzard's here. battle drums. This was it. Frozen Throne comes out and it's like, okay, what have I done to deserve yep. this blessing? Yeah. An RTS with heroes that level. I would go over to my dad's house and I convinced my dad that he needed a two thousand dollar computer to check his email, and I actually just wanted him to buy the computer so I could play Warcraft three. It worked actually. It did, and so I, uh, yeah, I, I played this all the time over at my dad's house on like BattleNet. It was fucking amazing in combat would set the foundation for what World of Warcraft would become. And you know this part of the <laughs> story. Fine, I'm Mr. T and I'm a Knight Elf Moor. Oh no. What's your game? World of Warcraft took the world by storm. Yeah. Earth and fire. Heed my call. Much like RuneScape, yeah. WoW became a pop culture phenomenon. Yep. I'll never forget the South Park episode where Blizzard and Comedy Central collaborated Whenever to make fun out. of the game. Yep. There was so much to love about Blizzard and, and their community, their identity. You know, just Dude, that the fun-loving so spirit man. behind everything. Oh, man! Dude, like, you guys remember back whenever... Like, Nick, I remember Nixian brought this up in a video once. If you guys played back in the day... Do you guys ever remember whenever Blizzard would do their earnings call and they would announce how many more subscribers they had and like everybody would be talking about it in trade chat? They're like, dude, the game just hit 8 million subs. Dude, the game just hit 9 million subs, man. And then like 10 million, everyone was talking about it. It was just like such a good fucking feeling, man. It was like everybody had that I was there feeling about the game and they were there. It was just, it's something you don't even think about anymore. But I remember having conversations about that whenever he brought it up, and it was like fucking. Oh, we're down to t <laughs> we're down to two million guys. <laughs> we're down to one million guys. Yeah. Poor Johnny. Now, even though this video is going to be more on the negative God, side, God, that doesn't look like this at all. I have a special place in my heart and memory for Blizzard as they were, the oh, great people who were wow. a part of it, and the incredible experiences they gave me. Yeah. That I that I bought. And that's not to say they haven't done any good over they, the last I didn't buy decade. It. My mom did. Overwatch was awesome. Yeah. Wow, classic, an incredible trip down memory lane. Sure was. Look, I'm not saying Blizzard as a whole is a reprehensible anti-gamer movement led by Anita Sarkeesian, whose sole purpose is to destroy all your favorite franchises and usher in the age of the Burning Legion. It's yeah, not that extreme, like that. all right? Truth be told, I don't have much good to say about current Blizzard. And that's where I want to focus on where they went wrong, how they destroyed their own reputation and image in my eyes, in the eyes of an old time fan. Yeah, I think I'll probably be agreeing with pretty much all this, dude. Like, I, you know, you guys know I got the Warcraft 3 box. I've got even the Warcraft 1 box. I've got all the old boxes in my old room, man. And it's, it's kind of crazy for me to think about I think that the problem is that um, the, the games aren't innovative anymore in the same way that they were. So, like, like, Overwatch, I think, is kind of an exception. I think that Overwatch is a genuinely really, really good game. But other than that, it feels like they haven't really taken any big chances and done anything unique and different with the game, like, game development in general. And I think that's kind of why uh, why they were doing so well. Overwatch is good. Overwatch is TF2 reskinned. I, I thought it was a good game, right? I mean, Overwatch is TF2 in the same way that uh, WoW was EverQuest. Oh, shit.
it. Oh shit, there he is. When Blizzard tasted Mr. the Money cursed bags. waters of Activision and merged with them in 2008, yep. it wasn't a highly controversial move it was. at the time. COD 4 mad. had just released eight months earlier, Guitar Hero was the hottest fad since the Wii, and they hadn't milked any of those franchises to death. Back Not then, yet. Activision Not wasn't yet. the same money-grubbing company we know today. Or ah. maybe they were, and they were just really good at hiding it. But none I of remember whenever the merger happened, there were a lot of people that were concerned. Uh, and I remember, like, as soon as the first storm out came out, that's whenever people started talking about it. Uh, t started talking about the merger. They're like, uh, you know, it's Activision making him do it. And that's whenever the, uh, the, the questioning began. Of us had the foresight. But Activision to did make good games. Just how much they made this great would games. Blizzard's identity, their culture, and their yeah. games. You did this to our people knowingly. Gah! Oh, I forgot all about this one. Where you had to use your real journey name. journey starts in July of 2010. Yes. Blizzard had a serious problem. StarCraft II absolutely killed it with its reveal, generating yeah. massive hype and sending shockwaves across all of Korea. StarCraft II was really It had been 12 popular. years since Brood War. Fans could not wait. StarCraft II yep. was coming out in three weeks, baby. However, Blizzard's official forums had become filled with vitriol and flame wars. Yep. Trolling and community toxicity was spiraling out of control, which yep. diluted the I discussions about the games themselves. Blizzard could not have this continue mm -hmm. with the launch of StarCraft II. Absolutely How do we not. change this toxic part of our community? One executive asked. Weight loss programs and general hygiene classes. That's Another not blurted work. out. Nobody's I've do that. got it. Brainwashed. People won't talk as much shit on the internet when they can be held accountable for it. So let's force- Well, Facebook proved that wrong. How the fuck did these guys ever think that was true? Like, what do you think? Somebody's gonna get fired for their job from saying that StarCraft II sucks? Like, yeah, that, it's the dumbest fucking thing ever. Uh, yeah, so they forced people to use their real names. Uh, th this is like a goal that they were going to do. They were going to make people use their real names on the forums and like force real ID. Everyone who uses our forums to display their real name. Take that, trolls. Yep. Take that! Oh, yes, that's a fantastic brilliant. idea. Sheer Amazing. Brilliant. Like a raise. Why are you so nice smart? Suck your dick. Okay, wow. but... How do we change this toxic part of our community without spitting in their face? Yeah. This decision, of course, had the exact reaction you'd expect. It sure did. The forums were this. flooded this with complaints, and King. one thread reached over 11,000 replies. Jesus. Look, I'm not saying let the trolls roam free in the forests of Buckland, but why wouldn't you just get moderators and or create <laughs> stricter guidelines for using the forums? Imagine, imagine moderating your platform. I imagine, imagine paying money to make the platform better. I imagine having people curtail bad behavior. Imagine having standards that you hold people to. And if people don't meet those standards, the accounts are actioned. Imagine that. I, I, I can't. Everyone to reveal personal information would not yeah. only discourage people from posting, but also punish people who did nothing wrong. Ultimately, yep. this new change would have created more problems than it would solve. Yep. So Blizzard scrapped it. But there's the actually a part of it there. Uh, one of the the reason, one of the reasons why they scrapped it is, if I remember right, I could be misremembering the story, uh, you know, partially. Um, but one of the executives at Blizzard had their personal information leaked, and like somebody called in like a bomb threat to his daughter's school. It was like some kind of like really really bad thing, and then after that, yeah, he got doxxed. And uh, it was... Oh, bat, bat yuck. I don't remember what it was specifically. But uh, I think that they didn't even realize, like Blizzard didn't even realize how bad it was. Because they didn't know what could happen. Because like it was like 2010. So like that kind of stuff wasn't really common then. 
So it was all kind of uncharted territory, and they just didn't know what was going on. And that's fucked up, man. Well, exactly. But the people did that, and it's not a good thing they did that. But, like, it certainly fucking showed them that it was a big fucking mistake to do this because it gives people this amount of power, and having that power is not good. The fact that Real ID was even considered as a possibility, let alone planned to be implemented across the board, yeah. was really just such a bizarre, out of touch. It was a thing weird to, decision to even attempt. Yeah, and I don't know why this. they did this. I work in a charity. If they see I am a gamer, it could affect my employment prospects. Gamers have been oppressed since 2010, baby. The back then, it was still kind of a. Uh, it, it was still kind of. It wasn't super normal to be a gamer. I know that might sound weird, right? But, like, back then, like, being a gamer was still kind of, like, assumedly, like, okay, you're lazy and you don't do anything. Frown But upon. the outrage yeah. seemed to be only temporary. Right. If we only knew what was in store for us down the line. Oh, boy. There it is. Oh, League of Legends. Blizzard has a long list of battles in the courtroom. Yeah, None more no, famous Dota, than Valve Dota. Corporation v. Activision Blizzard. This, yeah. of course, was over the legal rights to Defense of the Ancients. I don't know how the, the most fuck popular lost custom this. game for Warcraft 3. And it was a battle for the ages. Yep. Two of the biggest and most successful PC developers duking it out. Who will come out on top? Mm -hmm. From what I understand, Valve worked with Dota developer Icefrog who was later hired by them, and they wanted to trademark Dota as their intellectual property. Yep. Blizzard, of course, didn't want that. I don't want it. But Valve had already filed a trademark. Now, it's complicated, but for whatever reason, Blizzard and Valve settled out of court, with Valve keeping the rights to Dota All-Stars for commercial purposes, and Blizzard would be able to use it within their own custom games. I don't this know appears what to have been a that... mutual agreement, yeah. but with hindsight, we see just how badly Blizzard was shafted. Nobody thought Dota- No, they fucked themselves in the ass. Like, the thing is that if Blizzard had been on top of the MOBA genre, uh, I really do feel like that. And, like, I never even thought of this before, before this video here. But, like, imagine if Blizzard had been the ones that spearheaded MOBA gaming. That would have been fucking ridiculous. And I would have played MOBAs then. It probably would have changed, like, the, my, my gaming habits even, too. Uh, would have been bad? No. What do you mean? Not possible? I don't know. Like, yeah. Fair, they did try with HOTS. Well, yeah, like, way later on. And, like, HOTS was, it wasn't about HOTS. Uh, if HOTS was a really good game, nobody would have played it because people were already too invested in the other games. I, I, I don't know, man. Uh, MOBAs that suck then? Yeah, I, I feel like, honestly, if Blizzard had been the ones that spearheaded MOBAs, like, maybe that would have been bad, right? But, like, assuming the same thing would have happened, like, the perception of Blizzard would probably be much different. ...would turn into the massive eSports juggernaut yeah, that it is today. it's massive. But you have to wonder, how could Blizzard just let the magic lamp slip through their hands? Yeah, I don't really know. Aww. <laughs> Many fans lost faith in Blizzard's ability mm -hmm. to retain the rights and provide the games they wanted. Yeah. Not a good time. Oh. World of War 2012 to current? Oh, come on, man. <laughs> to current. Shit, dude. Shit. Here we, go. Here we go. World of Warcraft has been Blizzard's main moneymaker for years. Yep. With a large, diverse, dedicated oh. community. Throughout the Burning Legion and yep. Wrath of the Lich King expansions, the good. game only grew in size. This Cataclysm was a bit rocky, but it wasn't until May 2012 that Mists of Pandaria released. And yep. a large portion of fans voiced their discontent. This was really the turning point for World of Warcraft and what turned many people off of that game. Blizzard reported that 14% of users had canceled their subscriptions, a loss of 13 million players Jesus. after a brand new expansion that's supposed to build the game up. Shortly after Jesus, this, Blizzard dude. stopped publicizing their subscription numbers as showing a steady decline might further exacerbate the decline. Yeah, exactly. There were many controversial changes to WoW over the years.
the thing is like they just made such a big mistake by like can i feel like raid finder and dungeon finder were like really bad for the game and i think that's one of the big differences also like the fact that mists of pandaria the theme for the game just wasn't really something that resonated with players at all and i, I think that obviously it was fine in retrospect but like you compare it to burning crusade which was illidan everybody knew illidan from warcraft 3. Uh, wrath of the lich king i mean come on like deathwing was like really only it was like tangentially mentioned in like a few quests and there was a book that was written about him but that's about it there wasn't really a whole lot of other stuff going on with deathwing so cataclysm kind of came out or not cataclysm sorry uh but like mr pandaria that was literally an april fool's joke and a hidden mission inside of warcraft 3. like it was completely out of left field like cataclysm was kind of out of left field but like warcraft oh, sorry uh mr pandaria was way it was like what the fuck is this like nobody expected that at all so uh, same with the diablo mobile game appealing to china i don't know but um overall like i i I do think that was a big reason why people didn't like it was the theme. For me personally, that was the worst part about Mists of Pandaria. And then obviously having like all the different raid difficulties, all that other dog shit that I always talk about. You guys know how I feel about that. Among many was the Dungeon Finder, an expedited way there of finding players for raids and instances. Initially, you had to rally up a group of friends or yeah. other players and all commit hours to tackling these intense dungeons. And that was a lot of fun. It created so much community interaction. Well, it's Many of WoW's community-oriented features were made more accessible at the cost of player oh, yes. agency. World Yo, of Warcraft thanks, started Appreciate to that, feel less like a world and more of an automated experience. Why much, leave the main city if you can just hop into a queue and find a raid or instance anyways? In yeah. some ways, I'm willing to give Blizzard the benefit of the doubt for WoW's decline in popularity. Keeping a game alive for that long is going to have some speed bumps. And even no, it's a problem is they started taking... Here's the problem with WoW, right? Is they started making WoW not appeal to people that play WoW, that like WoW. They started making WoW not WoW in order to make people that don't like WoW like WoW. And whenever they did that, they alienated the people that did like the game. And you have like this weird middle ground right now where they're catering to people and they're trying to make the game appealing to people that don't like it. And that's the problem that they did with, Miss, with, with, with Wrath. That they made Wrath... Wrath, I think, in a lot of ways, was made to appeal to people that did not like WoW beforehand. And that's why they made way easier raids. They had the Dungeon Finder. And they had, like, all of this fucking catch-up gear. And, and, like, all of this stuff happened. It worked only in the short term. Because, really, I mean, Burning Crusade saw much more growth than Wrath of the Lich King. And, obviously, it's part of the, the nature of the game being newer then. But, also, like, subs flatlined in Wrath, too. Like, even in Wrath, they flatlined uh, towards the end of ICC. And it's not a surprise. It was took forever. But, um, no, I, I think it was a massive mistake. Uh, it really was. Even though many fans have disagreed with the direction Blizzard has taken, at yeah. least they finally came out with WoW Classic. And both games yep. seem to be coexisting peacefully. Huh. Yeah, right. <laughs> but here's where we get into the real shit. Maybe oh, it was just my video. experience, but I vividly remember the launch of Diablo 3 as being one of the single most disappointing game launches of all time. Next to MCC. What? It was that bad. <laughs> We got in, like, I got into Diablo 3 pretty early on. Like, it took me, like, maybe an hour or two to log in, and then I played until the sun came up, uh, and then, like, after that, everything was pretty much good. Error 37. Yeah, I remember Error 37 was the top trending thing on all of Twitter the night that Diablo 3 got released. It was such a massive fucking cock. Diablo 3, I feel like the game, the problem with Diablo 3 is that there was no testing for any of the acts beyond Act 1. And there also was no testing for Inferno mode. 
So the fact is, like, people got through the core game in, like, a week. Then after that, they played Inferno that was not balanced at all. And Blizzard intentionally did not balance it because they're like, we just took everything and doubled the values for everything. And obviously, that's not going to give you a pretty... Uh, it's not going to be enjoyable to play because uh, it was just completely overtuned and super hard for certain classes and then only doable by certain, cl you know, other classes. It was complete fucking garbage. And, and then on top of that, you had um, the auction house, which I, I don't think the auction house was that big of a deal, uh, personally. But um, you had, like, the other acts, like Act 2, 3, 4. These acts, so if you guys remember, I, I don't know if you do, but back whenever the Diablo 3 beta was out, you could only do Act 1. So Act 1, even in Inferno mode, was pretty good. Act 1 was very well coded. There were no big bugs or, uh, you know, well, I guess in Act 2, most of the bugs with the bugs were bugs, but with the wasps. But in Act 1, everything was relatively clean up until Skeleton King. Yeah, yeah, you would get up to Skeleton King and then it would be over. You never did the Butcher. But uh, even the Butcher was pretty much okay. Um, so, yeah, as soon as you got into Act 2, you had, like, these mobs that would throw grenades at you and they oh, just one-shot you. You No, it was... It was the wasp. No, the wasp. Yeah, the wasp. So these, there would be like these little wasps that you would have to kill, and they would shoot little smaller wasps at you. But what would happen is not only would the smaller wasps basically one shot you if even one of them hit you, but on top of that, they were um they would just despawn. They would go invisible randomly because of a bug, and then you'd just die. So you'd just be standing there. The wasps would go away, and then they'd hit you while they were invisible and you would die it was uh it, it was fucking ridiculous so i i don't know man like i feel like diablo 3 like those were the big mistakes they made with diablo 3 not only had basically all of the depth been stripped away from diablo 2 yeah not only did it feel like a poor man's version of Diablo 2, Ooh, but it was also ones. just straight that. up broken. Yep. I waited years for this game, and within four hours of gameplay, I was like, this ain't it, Chief, <laughs> and never looked back. The I always played it online a lot, actually. and DRM features were heavily criticized, yeah. totally unnecessary for people wanting oh, to yeah. just it was play single player. All the time. I single that. player is it, says Diablo 3. Mind if we force you to play online anyway, in case you change your mind? Kind of yeah. do as it happens, Diablo 3. Sorry, can't hear you over the sound of all my money. The yeah. art direction. I never thought being always online was a big deal, and the only reason it was a problem is because the online servers were dog shit. Like, I, I didn't really care about Always Online because I thought it was to prevent hackers. I, I didn't care about that. But um, the servers were just terrible. And that's why you would die all the time. Like, you'd rubber band, you'd get out of something, you'd rubber band back, it would hit you. It was just fucking terrible. It was criticized, it didn't feel hellish, gameplay yeah. story was awful, excessive amounts of useless gear with 1% of that shit being actually usable. Oh, some things Everything never Everything was a bust. It just didn't feel uh, I'm like... I'm glad they took that idea and they put it in WoW. Diablo. The sanctity of this place has been fouled. Diablo 3 was the subject of numerous yep. complaints by fair trade organizations across the world. In France alone, a consumer group reported that there were 1,500 complaints in four days. The organization... Wow. Forgive me. K... Choicier, K. Choicier, mm. asked Blizzard to, and this is my translation, tell us when the fuck the game is going to be playable. Oh, yeah. Be straight up, okay? Yep. Be a fucking homie. Blizzard Just responded by know. saying, there's a sticker on the box that says, internet connection required. <laughs> fuck you! The Fair Trade Commission alleged that Blizzard <laughs> had violated right. consumer rights laws in South Korea. Wow. Hundreds of gamers from there demanded refunds which yep. Blizzard refused to grant until a month later. In Germany, the Federation mm -hmm. of Consumer Organizations threatened legal action against Blizzard Jesus, dude, I for their all lack about of transparency this. with the DRM, all about consumers' this. inability to resell the game. And then there was the Auction House, a feature Blizzard implemented to make everyone's gaming experience much better. Right? WRONG! If the gameplay wasn't yeah. shallow enough, this fucking atrocity of a feature made it so players could literally put in real money to buy the best gear. This I sold the sword on there for 150 bucks. I think it was actually a pole arm.
I I will never forget that. I'll never even forget where I was. Like, I, I, w I went inside, like, the fucking, the first level of the butcher's area, and it was, like, the first mob in there. I killed it, and it drops this fucking item level 63, like, fucking one hand. I loot that shit, and I sold it on that auction house for $150, and I celebrated, and I took me and all the boys out to Panda Express, and I said, boys, we're rich now. We ain't got to worry about no motherfucking money, dude. Get whatever you want on the menu. Like, I, dude, I, that was so fucking good, man. And uh, I, I don't really think they should do, like, the real money auction house was a mistake, but I think having the auction house in Diablo 3 was a good idea. Uh, I, I liked having the auction house more than not having one in Reaper of Souls. It actually made the game kind of boring for me. This undercut the entire point of playing Diablo 3. The quest yeah, for gear comes from playing the game, killing monsters, doing quests. Yeah. That's what makes it fulfilling. Yeah. Not by entering your credit card information. You just buy it was one of the want. earlier and more egregious forms of microtransactions, as Blizzard took a cut of all the profits. How convenient. It took them two years to realize how damaging the auction house was, and would shut it down mm -hmm. completely in March of 2014. There it is. At this point, we all started to worry there and it is. wonder. How could Blizzard continue to get into legal trouble? How could this company with a stainless track record bungle it so badly with Diablo 3? How could they betray us? We didn't live up to the high standards that we really set for ourselves. Yeah, I've heard that before. Oh, Nostalgius! As well Damn, continued to lose that. subscribers, yeah. fans took it upon themselves to recreate the WoW game they wanted. Mm -hmm. Many private servers popped up offering different iterations of WoW that were no longer playable. Yep. Do you think when Burning Legion came out that it was the best? Here's your server. Yep. Wrath of the Lich King? Here's your server. Vanilla? Here's your server. Yeah, Nostalgia was fucking huge. It wasn't legal. But it showed a surprising demand. Look at all those fucking people, dude. Holy shit. That's a lot of guys. So, yeah, I, I mean, like, Nostal I never played Nostalrius, but I was very, very close to playing it. I, a lot of my friends played it. Uh, I just never went in there myself. I kind of wish that I had. In, in retrospective, I kind of wish that I had. But, um, yeah, it was the first time. Uh, no lag. Well, I mean, like, listen... The Blizzard, they've got the best servers, man. They got the best servers, obviously. For that classic vanilla experience. At its yeah. height, Nostalrius had 800,000 registered accounts. Jesus, Naturally, dude. having that many people That's flock a to people, a service dude. that you don't operate is bad for business. Yeah. And in this case, copyright infringement. The solution? Shut it down, boys. I don't think Blizzard was in the wrong for shutting down Nostalrius. I mean, they had to shut it down for a million reasons, and it did infringe on their copyright. And it's reasonable to think that people that played on Nostalrius would be less likely to pay for your game. Like, I, I mean, there's anybody that actually thinks Blizzard is assholes for shutting down Nostalrius is a fucking idiot. Um, but at the same time, it's a disappointment that, uh, yeah, I think people just wanted to play classic. That's really what it was. Copyright production? Yeah, I, I don't know, man. They should just make a better product? No, because then, like, it's not about that, man. Like, it's about people... Basically, I think if you... I'm not really a big fan of, like, a lot of the copyright laws. I feel like they're kind of intrusive and unfair. But I think that at the point where you're promoting a product and you're providing a product that takes away sales of the people who originally have the IP of it, then, yeah, I think that that's not good. That's bad, and it, that's that's reasonable to want to get rid of it. They pulled out their Warhammer, sent a cease and desist order, yep. and Nostalrius was shut down. But that only seemed to further- N Nostalrius, oh look at that dude. Um, Nostalrius, uh, they shut down on their own. Like the cease and desist happened, but Nostalrius just immediately complied with it. Like they didn't try to fight it or anything, they just complied with it immediately. Yeah, it's my video man agitate the already upset fan base a petition popped up begging blizzard to consider a vanilla version of wow it received over 280,000 signatures yep. they couldn't deny the I facts this, anymore man. a lot of people didn't like wow anymore 
and they wanted the old version and that's it's crazy like now like now we're getting into the point where like these are things that have happened that i remember you know that i was like there for i was making videos about this shit uh, i think that's one of the coolest parts about this is like you go back and see my videos and like me complaining about it etc you know classic andy's get so mad yeah yeah i know blizzard was upset because they felt fans weren't appreciating or understanding the work they were putting in. Remember that one bug that really pissed you off that we fixed like two years ago? No. Still there in the past. While it was within their it's rights to terminate the server, for three and a half years, no alternative was offered by Blizzard. And this yep. was made all the more worse when J. Allen Brack, the new CEO, answered this question. Here we go. Have you ever thought about adding servers for previous expansions as they were then? No. 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 And, and by the way, you don't want to, that, to do that either. You think you do, but, but you, you don't. don't. Here's a lesson in healthy business practices. Don't tell your consumers what they don't want. Show them why they want what you're working on. Better yet, listen yep. to what your fans are asking for and meet that demand. There's no point in showing this kind of contempt towards your audience unless your goal is to purposely damage your own reputation and goodwill. And I, I think that like what Jay Allen Brack said is like true for a lot of people. To be fair, like I, I think it's true. There's a lot of people that played Classic for a while, and I remember whenever Classic came out, like a month after that, the yeah the face, uh, they they said that like oh Classic made me appreciate BFA a lot more. You know now I appreciate retail way more. So I think he was right for a lot of people. It's just that he wasn't right for everybody, and there was still a huge audience of people who who did like who did like classic right and i think that like what what i think this video like what what i would go a step further and say you don't necessarily need to look and see and i've said this before right you need to look and see what the people ask for and not necessarily give them what they ask for but derive from what they ask for what they need and give them that instead so i think what people wanted with classic wow like, yes, obviously they wanted the original game, but many of the people asking for Classic WoW really wanted a return to form for World of Warcraft. Classic WoW is just the way that they express that. Then J. Allen Breck started talking shit about Classic WoW. Yeah. How their expansions were so orgasmically good. Remember when you had to, like spam cities and say need a tank need a tank need a tank during the burning crusade days you don't remember that because now you just push a button that says go to the dungeon and now you don't remember the dungeon you would be a fool to want the older obsolete yep. inferior version of wow don't fucking patronize me with the shutdown, the Nostalrius team went to Blizzard's HQ and gave mm -hmm. an 80-page essay on the development of the server. Yep. It looked and sounded like Blizzard was going to work with some of the Nostalrius devs to create WoW Classic. That would have been awesome. Bred some goodwill with the community, yeah. and these developers would make great representatives of that community. It would inspire yep. faith in the company, but they never actually worked with them. And it really shows the sinful pride of Blizzard. For a long time, they just couldn't accept the fact that fans didn't like the newer expansions and how WoW was changing. But they were the ones out of touch, not the community. I don't think that it was entirely because of that. Um, yeah, I, I don't think it was entirely because of that at all. Like, to me, like Blizzard, it made sense that they wouldn't want to do classic WoW. But I just think that it closed fridge. Stop. Just stop, guys. Um, anyway, so yeah. Uh, it, it makes sense that they wouldn't want to do Classic WoW in a lot of ways. And I could see their logic for it. It's just that at the end of the day, I think that a lot more people liked Classic WoW than didn't. Uh, that's really what it comes down to. And uh, private server. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know, man. Closed fridge. Can we time out the closed fridgers? Yeah, let, let's time that out. It's annoying. Okay, um, anyway, so, I, I, I don't know, man, like, 
I see what, what Blizzard was trying to get at with Classic WoW and like what their goal was with it. But at the same time, I'm not really, uh, I, I'm, I'm not convinced they made the right decision until they introduced Classic, right? E even though it made sense for them not to want to do it. I don't think that it was entirely because of pride. I think that they just didn't want to invest the time into something and then be stuck holding on to something and spending money on it, like kind of keeping it alive if it wasn't going to make them money. Do you guys not have phones? Yeah, you guys that, all have phones. Phone, right? BlizzCon is the annual convention held by Blizzard. Those were the it's days, a massive, man. exciting event that showcases and Those promotes all the their days. major franchises. Celebrities make appearances, famous wow. bands close out the show. It's just epic. Yep. Who's this guy? This is a dwarf. And uh, his I you know what? I prefer a little person. Well, um, okay. Not many developers have an entire convention <laughs> okay. at their disposal. And it's just That's Blizzard's good, way of showcasing their power, getting yep. fans hyped to consume product. But in 2018, which is good, BlizzCon became the opposite of that. Hear ye, hear ye, fans of Diablo. Behold, the new experience you've been waiting for. Diablo. Immortal. For immortal. So we knew we want to use mobile devices as the platform for a new Diablo game. Because nothing brings a family together like slaying demons. You want to explain yourself? What? To this day, I still cannot believe that they did this. Dude, I, I still, I still haven't watched that whole scene. I can't. So I, I can't. Like I, I literally I, I can't, can't watch it. I, I can't watch it. I'd rather watch Scott's tots on repeat for fucking a hundred days than watch the announcement of Diablo Immortal. Like I, I don't want to fucking see it, man. It's just, it's so. It's so sad, and it's like they shouldn't, like, it was just so, so fucking bad. Fuck. What are you doing? People were confused, and threw yeah. a series of hilarious questions in the faces of the developers, uh, the situation started to get uh, out of hand. So how long has Diablo Immortal been in development, and how is it affecting other Diablo projects? Yeah, good question. <laughs> well, you may or may not have heard. I can't imagine the embarrassment of having the crowd of people at your own convention turn against you. But I, I don't, I feel like, th I felt bad for the guys. I really did because like they weren't really, I, I mean, they weren't going out of the way. They weren't doing anything bad. I, I mean, I think that probably like they don't even make the decisions on like anything like that. So it, it just doesn't make any, it doesn't make any sense to hate on them. But at the same time, it's kind of, uh, it, it is kind of sad. Um, fuck, man. After the CEO. Okay, dude. Let me go down to the other ones. All right, here we go. It should showcase just how out of touch yeah, you are with them. The April okay. In particular, the majority of the games are PC oriented, with yeah. Blizzard Hearthstone being one of the other mobile games. Yeah. Why bring it to mobile? Are you trying to reach a new audience of players? What we remember about BlizzCon yep. 2018 is the charcoal remains of the PR department. Hey, uh, just was wondering, is this uh, an out-of-season April Fool's joke? Oh, oh, oh! Uh, oh, no, Blizzard said they were surprised by the negative response. What? The legend. Now, either they're lying, or they are once again supremely and genuinely out of touch with their community. Uh, probably both. I, I, I would say probably both. Th they... They don't really know what the players want. It's hard for them to understand it. And at the same time, they lying for sure though. Well, no, I, I don't think that they understood. Like, I don't know why they wouldn't understand this, but they don't. I think that a lot of the developers and Blizzard is, and a lot of companies are like this. They're so insulated from their audience and their actual fans that they don't even directly communicate with them. So the only things that they ever get from their fans are like angry messages. 
they don't see the positive stuff they don't see the good stuff they only see like an angry person who's like tweeting at them on their personal account telling them that they suck so they're insulated from the actual community they're separated from the community by these community managers and like these other red tape fucking things that they have going on uh at blizzard to make sure devs don't say anything bad then on top of that you have blizzard probably saying yeah obviously we weren't going to say that we knew it was bad you know uh, I, I don't know, man, because uh, Blizzard's owned by Activision. I don't think that's really what the uh, what the secret is, man. I'm, I'm not sure. Next expansion is going to hopefully be good. Yeah, I've been saying that for a few years now, probably about 10. Um, I, I don't know, man. Uh, numbers don't add up. Why? Classic's more popular than retail? Well, just because there are more people that are raiding in Classic versus raiding in Retail WoW doesn't mean that Classic's more popular because Classic only has one end game. So, like, anybody who's a max level player is going to be doing BWL versus most people that are playing Retail WoW don't even raid. So, it's not, a, uh, it's not an accurate comparison. Uh, start a video game company? I don't really think that's it. But, like, that's a big problem is, like, the developers, they don't have, like, that community... Uh, that community engagement that they used to that's a big issue right um retail entities it's not about that right i mean it doesn't really matter which game's more popular just play whatever you want but it's just it's simply dumb to say that classic's more popular there are obviously more people playing retail wow that does not mean that retail wow is like infinitely better than classic or anything like that it's just that there's more to do in retail wow like it's not i, I don't know am i so out of touch no. Blizzard, your That's fan right. base is mostly a PC gamer demographic. Yeah, that Those was the are the people who buy tickets to BlizzCon. Yeah. If you want to make a phone game, make a phone game. Of course. But don't expect your fans to give a shit or not bombard you with questions like... Is there any plans to make this playable on PC or is this strictly mobile? That's one thing I was curious about. Get nothing! Blizzard's ideals and principles were yep. shelved in favor of tapping into the mobile gaming market. If you didn't think they were selling out with the auction house, yep. you sure did now. Did Surprise. you guys not have phones? Yeah, you guys that, all have phones. Phone. Right? You can play your tablet too. Hey, that really sucks. Do you guys not? That's the, the fucking... In 10 years, Blizzard will never live that down. That's the funniest thing about this is like they will never live that shit down of the one day that they had that happen. Uh, I, I feel bad for them in a way, but at the same time, I kind of don't. You know, it is it, it's it's what they get, man. This mountain was so, so bad. I know it was awful. Like, I felt bad for Blizzard, honestly. Like, I, I don't the thing is, like, I think there's a lot of people if they had announced Diablo 4 at the same time. And then they announced Diablo Immortal with Diablo 4. Everybody would have been super happy and they would have been excited to play Diablo Immortal and Diablo 4. But it, the reason why they were mad about this is the bait and switch. They were mad because they thought they were getting Diablo 4 and they got Diablo Immortal instead. And not, not only that, but remember yeah. before that BlizzCon, Blizzard put out a thing on Diablo saying... Guys, uh, we've we heard some rumors, and you think that we're gonna do like Diablo Four news this year, and we're not. So they even tr they knew it was coming, and yeah. they tried to curtail the uh, the amount of backlash they would get, and it still didn't work. Yeah, that's actually a really good point. So I, I guess like yeah, how could they say they didn't expect people to be negative about it if they made a press release saying that there weren't gonna be the things that people were expecting? A L little bit contradictory. Wizard Sox fell 20 to present the days because of Diablo Immortal. I, I mean, like, I, I think Diablo 4, okay? Like, Diablo 4 does look really good. But I, I just, I'm, I'm going to tell you guys right now, like, I don't see how Diablo 4 can compete with PoE. I, I, I don't, right. I, I don't see how it's possible. Like, PoE is just so far ahead in terms of ARPG. Diablo 4, they, I mean, obviously I think Diablo 4 is going to have superior combat and fluidity than PoE because that's what Blizzard really specializes in. Uh, only people who write positive messages about Blizzard will get beta access. We'll see what happens. Um, but overall, uh, that's one thing like Diablo 3 really has. Like 
combat feels visceral in Diablo 3. Like, whenever you hit somebody with a fucking slam with that hammer ability, like uh, Barbarians, and the corpses go fucking everywhere, that feels fucking good. Like, the combat in Diablo 3 feels really good. Or at least it did back whenever I played it. I haven't compared it to anything recently. But PoE is very complex. So I think Diablo... If they're going to go, I don't think that they should try to compete with PoE in terms of complexity. I, I don't think so. Because the game is just so, they're so far behind. And also, as a AAA development studio, they're just not going to be as agile as, as Grinding Gear Games is. They will just never be as agile as they are. Because there's too many people involved in the project for that to happen. So, it would be a better decision for them to make basically PoE light and just kind of have that fill the void. It's the same as like you have games like um, like Escape from Tarkov, right? Where it's like a very very complex game, and because of its because of its complexity, a lot of people don't get into it. And you have other people that like Warzone a lot because it's simpler. And you could kind of compare those two games. There's a lot of people that are positive about it. A lot of people that are not. People don't really hate Tarkov. They just don't want to play it. And I think that's the difference that Blizzard can hopefully go with. Blizzard can be Warzone, where Poe can be Tarkov. That is, in my opinion, the best possible outcome. Record profits, Video record game layoffs. development is notorious hey. for how hellish it can be. An extremely competitive market filled with stressful deadlines, oh. long hours, hectic work weeks, yeah, and worst like of all, uncertainty of consistent employment. Hey, when a know. game is finished and out the door, Many employees have to wonder if they too will be sent out. Well, dude, I remember that shit that happened, man. Like Marty O'Donnell. Remember that, McConnell? Huh? They fired Marty O'Donnell. This Fuck's dude. That? What do you mean, who's that? That is the dude that made the Halo music. And I remember they got rid of this guy, like, right after, um, right after they got finished making a game or something. I, I don't remember, like, what it was specifically. But I felt so sad about that because that's the guy that made the Halo music. Like, I fucking loved that music. That guy is a fucking legend, man. And they just got rid of him. I was so sad to see it. Fuck. Before Destiny came out? Yeah, it was before Destiny? I don't It's Destiny 1. I don't remember, man. Let me see. We sent out. Well, Blizzard answered that question by laying off eight hundred employees yeah, in February of 2019. Mm -hmm. 800 people with families and lives and an income they need, benefits, insurance, yeah. gone. Well, employees, this has been real educational now, but now it's time to part with that old Activision Blizzard saying, Yeah. Get the fuck out of my building. <laughs> During this time, Activision Blizzard reported... I mean, like, I don't think it was a, a necessarily... Was it a bad decision to fire the people if they felt like those people weren't necessary? I, I don't think that it's... It's like, I, I don't know. It's like they always do that. Yeah, I mean, yes, what the fuck? Yeah, it's a business. They rehired the positions. That's the that's the shady thing about it, right? The kicker, right? That, that's yeah, the that, that's, the, that's what I think makes it bad. But, like, companies restructure all the time. I don't think that it's fair to just kind of like demonize any company for doing layoffs if they feel like certain positions are redundant or not important anymore. Like that's, that, not, that's what no, they have to do. No, they didn't do. I don't think that's why. Like, I mean, it might be. I, I don't. I'm talking yeah, out ahead. my ass, but it could be like, you know, those employees were there for so long and they would have gotten more benefits as time went on. They would have had to offer more benefits and they didn't want to do that because it would have been expensive. Have, yeah. so they just hired new people. Yeah. They said exactly. fuck that, and then they just hired new people. Yeah, CEO bonus, same every year, by the way. Well, yeah, I mean, like, what I'm saying is that, like, the CEO bonus and this are, like, kind of two separate things. I, I don't think that, I don't think that businesses have an obligation to employ people whenever those people don't provide a tangible benefit to the business based off of uh, what the business considers valuable. Like, I, I don't think that they have an obligation to do that. Because uh, to say otherwise is basically saying that like businesses have to hire people, which is I don't think that's fair either. Uh, but I think that really the shadiest thing about this is the fact that they rehired people for the exact same positions. 
$7.5 billion in sales, $1.8 billion in pure profit. Crack the goddamn champagne bottles, what an accomplishment. You guys remember the Wii U? Yeah, it was pretty gross and flopping super hard back in- I know what he's gonna say. Um, I'll just let him say it. 2014. Nintendo was not looking good, and at that point the boss, Satoru Iwata, took a pay cut to keep his employees employed. That was at a time when Nintendo saw a 30% decrease in profits. People yep. look to big- Yeah, I remember whenever that happened, man. That guy's a fucking legend. Like, that guy was also, wasn't he the one that coded Pokemon, like, gold and, like, silver or whatever to have all the old zones, too? And everybody thought it was impossible? Like, that guy is a fucking legend. And, uh, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was insane. So, it's like, it is different, but also, I, I think that there's something to be said. I, I really like the, uh... I don't know if it's really like a Japanese uh, like business values, but I could call it that, right? The Nintendo business values, at least. Nintendo, I, I feel like, is probably one of the most steady and solid companies throughout the entire like uh, gaming restructuring because what they've done is they've stayed true to what they are, and instead of trying to compete with PC games... They've done things different with the Switch. They've made the Switch portable. They made the Wii, where you move your hands around. They're innovative in a way that PlayStation and Xbox aren't taking chances with. And because of that, they're focusing on their audience of generally younger gamers, making games that are more lighthearted, for the most part. And they're still succeeding, and everybody still loves Nintendo. And that's very important to keep in mind. Like PR stuff, like it, it mat it's not a big deal, but it does matter. It, it does really matter. That they didn't it flopped. Uh, I think the Wii was successful. The Wii was very successful. The Wii U was not successful because it didn't translate and it didn't uh, uh people didn't know it was a new console, basically. That was my understanding. Like, I did some reading about this and I, I saw like a few like articles about it. People didn't understand the Wii U was a new console. They thought it was like an add-on to the current Wii. And that's why when the Switch came out, it was very, very popular. Like, the Switch is extremely popular now. Uh, I, I don't know how popular, really. I don't have any numbers. But I, I think that it's a very popular game, or a very popular console. Like, if I was going to pick right now, I have... I'll give you guys this example, right? And obviously, this is the 20-minute tangent in the middle of a 40-minute of a video, right? Uh, is I have every single Nintendo console ever since Super Nintendo. And I would have had the original Nintendo, but I wasn't old enough. So I started there. I have GameCube, Nintendo 64, fucking Wii, the Wii U, the Switch. I have everything. Every single fucking console. Xbox, I don't have the new Xbox. And I don't have the new, uh, I don't have the PS3. I, I never got it. It didn't matter to me. But Nintendo, I always made sure I had a Nintendo. Because they were doing something unique and different. I have a PS4 though. I have a PS4, I didn't buy a PS3 companies for guidance we want to feel good about where our money is going is it going to bobby kotick's wallet or yes. is it going to the people yes, down and dirty on the front lines who no. sometimes work 70 plus because hours a week nintendo it's, made a statement getting... about the importance of their employees there is, there and blizzard right did there. the same they were just radically opposite statements yeah I get that a company much the same. may take on more workers than they need over time. Oh, Reggie, and yeah. Activision Blizzard might not have been able to find a place for these 800 lost souls. But yeah. does that make it any less disheartening for a company to be celebrating its greatest success without sharing that with some of the people who made that happen? In June 2003, the leaders yeah. of the Diablo project left Blizzard North. Feeling like they weren't involved with the big decisions anymore, and unable to guarantee their own employees' compensations and futures, the Blizzard North executives protested. I remember this. They even went so far as to tender their resignations unless they were heard. Unfortunately, those resignations were accepted. Oh In 2019, perceptions around Blizzard had completely changed. And in October yep. of 2019, a professional Hearthstone player, the martyr Blitz Chung, made a This was, dude, this was such a- I remember the day this happened, 
everybody was going. Do you remember that McConnell? What, what was it? The fucking the Blitz Chung, the free Hong Kong thing. Oh shit! Oh god, dude. That was rough. That day, everybody, like every streamer, like was just getting fucking harassed. That was playing a Blizzard game because people thought that like they were doing a good thing by harassing a streamer for playing a video game. It's like that's one of the that's one of the dark sides of internet activism is that it rationalizes uh bad behavior for people and it just makes them feel good about you know hurting other people and being assholes and that was not good but at the same time like i got a lot of that whenever because like obviously i was like you know classic wow streaming there's a lot of people that were fucking uh that were watching you know and uh it was fucking awful man and uh, another day of uh, people rationalize bad behavior no matter what. Uh, I, I don't really think that's necessarily it. You banned so many people that day. Yeah, I just started banning people because of it. Because they were just like, they were so emotionally invested in it. And I'll, I'll talk more about this, but I'll, I'll, let, uh, I'll let him start. A political statement in support of Golden the Hong Kong protests yeah, while exactly. on a live stream. Nuclear launch detected. There we go. As Americans, we are naturally sympathetic yep. to those who have had their freedom stripped away unfairly. Yep. They say a man never really knows himself oh. until his freedom's been taken away. Hell Such yeah, is brother. the undisputed case in China. Now, I'm not trying to grandstand. But yeah. China isn't exactly the paragon of human rights. No! Yet Blizzard's no, monetary not. ties to China, like many other U.S. companies, uh -huh. they have to tiptoe around China's strict guidelines to release their products in their country. They are very picky and very profitable. China's actually a free yeah, and loving something country. Like that. Not taking any chances, Blizzard banned his ass. Mm -hmm. Fuck those new casters. No payment. You're gone. You're banned. Hope you learn your lesson. Speaking out about human rights issues. I don't think that... The thing is that it's very complex. Because I think really what the problem was is that they were censoring for this company. And, uh, oh, do you know? Uh, no, it isn't. Here it comes. No, it, it's not. So, I'm going to say something that's probably that's probably going to be controversial, okay? Oh, don't, don't. I, I've got it. I mean, like, you got to have some common fucking sense, okay? Oh, like, my. yes, to a degree, I don't want to see people that go and th the, the agreement was that they would not make political statements on the show. And he goes and he makes a political statement on the show and he gets removed. That's not... Like, he, he violated the contract. Like, do you want to have every single thing, somebody takes their hobby horse, and then they fucking talk about it whenever they're on the show? No, I don't think so at all, man. And true, no. I mean, the thing is, like, there's no reason. There's no reason to act like not again. Well, that's because people are blinded by emotions and are not thinking logically. Do you want every single show that Blizzard does to be inundated with the casters and the competitors' politics? No. Of course not. I don't want that. I don't think anybody wants that. So I don't understand how this is somehow different. Now, the reason why it was bad is because Blizzard was doing it because it was not, not because it conflicted with their values, but because it conflicted with their profit. Like, that, that's all there is to it. So, for example, if someone had gone up there and they had said, and also because it was in China, uh, it's like if somebody had said in Hearthstone that they believe that everybody should have the right to marry whoever they want, Blizzard would not have fired them. They would not have fined them. They would not have banned them from the events, okay? They would not have done this. So the issue was that it was selective as well, is that Blizzard takes a stand and pretends about caring about human rights and then whenever it can cost them money, they uh, th they fold, which is like, OK, that's fine. If you want to decide that and you want to make your decisions based off of that, it's completely OK. If you want to be just a soulless, blood sucking company, then be a soulless, blood sucking company. But don't be a soulless, blood sucking company and then post things about how much you care about different minorities while at the same time letting other minorities get dominated by an authoritarian, totalitarian police state. 
Like you just you can't have the two of them. I think that the hypocrisy was what was really bad. Uh, that's what I didn't like. On our platform. This is not a political platform, except it is. Yeah, exactly. When it's convenient for us. Exactly. Now, I did a whole... Not convenient, but profitable. It's profitable. But I, I know that, like, obviously have... Uh, is simping so hard? No, I'm not. I, I'm speaking logic. I, I'm, I'm telling the truth, right? And because the thing is, like, the logical conclusion of what I'm saying is something that everybody would agree with. But because it's with something that they are emotionally invested in, they're not thinking about it clearly. Uh, I, I don't think that there's any sort of uh, any sort of weird shit going on. Like, uh, there's no, th there's nothing wrong with Blizzard not wanting political messages on their platform, but they can't say that and then only be okay with some political messages and not others. Video on this subject, please check that out if you are at all interested. I summarize it a lot more in depth, so I'll be brief. On its own, yeah. it's a fucked up decision. But with the yeah. George Floyd protests, it also shows the real double standard and hypocrisy. You banned Blitzchung, docked yep. his pay, fired the casters involved, all because he supported a protest in Hong Kong. I, I never I never was against them firing the casters, I'll say this again, because they knew what he was about to say. How did they know what he was about to say? Because they put their heads down so they wouldn't be able to be seen by the government. They knew what he was going to say. And so obviously they colluded in allowing him to break the rules of the tournament. Like, it seems pretty obvious to me. Is, is that, is that bad? Well, wait, but they're not production. They have no power over what he says. Yeah. Do people disagree with that? Wait, why do you oh. guys disagree with that? They're fucking mad. They're questioning you and everything. Look at you. Well, Chad I don't right understand now. how that, like, they put their head down before he said anything. Why would they do that unless they knew what he was going to say? Or, or at least this far. They probably knew what he was going to say before he said it. That implies that there was some sort of collusion about this. And they willingly allowed this to happen. They did not tell production. They did not do anything like that. And they allowed it to happen, which put people in, in jeopardy, people's jobs in jeopardy. They probably saw him put on the mask. Maybe that could be it. I don't know. But I think that it's also completely possible that they talked with him. What are they supposed to do? Not interview him? It's not their choice. They could tell production, have production talk to him and tell him not to do that. Uh, or tell him not to do that himself because it puts other people's jobs at risk. There's a lot of people whose jobs, like you guys need to remember this, right? Blizzard taking a stand against China loses a lot of people their jobs. I'm not saying it's the wrong thing to do, but what I'm saying is that it's not as black and white as you might think. This altruism that you might believe in is actually selfish in many ways. And you have the gall to post this on Twitter as if your company represents this yeah. statement wholeheartedly of course racism not. has no place in our society or any society except hong kong and china the, yeah. those societies are cool nothing's wrong with them all is well consumed product even if you weren't just another company Something like that morally grandstanding on yeah, these protests and this issue while it's current it's blatantly hypocritical outrage was so mm -hmm. astronomical at blizzard that the united states congress asked them to oh, reduce the this. punishment yeah My fucking congress got involved you fucked up so badly uh, they're just trying to get on top of it for for a clout they don't give a fuck boycotts were gaining traction uh, i don't Blizzard believe that had yet another pr nightmare yeah, I, on their I, hands. yeah right base is under attack our town is under siege yep. we're being attacked we are under we are attack under destroying our city under the town is under attack this sounds like me our our town is is under attack. Attack. now they eventually reduced the punishment but never actually directly addressed the criticism. Only vaguely stated that we will do better going forward. J. Allen Brack deserves a lot of flack for how he handled this situation. You're supposed to be I, a- I don't, I don't like how they didn't mention the guy. I, I thought that was kind of, uh, that was kind of silly to me. Uh, they didn't mention the guy. They didn't talk about it. They only referred to it. Um, what do you call it? They, they only referred to it tangentially. I uh, opinion on conduit strangers that are flocking destroyed. Don't farm them. Just don't have to. I don't know. I'll have to think about that later. Um, but yeah, I mean, 
they didn't say it. They didn't say any, they didn't name the guy. They didn't name the event. They didn't do anything. Everybody knew what they were talking about, but they didn't do anything about it. And I thought that was kind of cheap. But I, I think that Blizzard, they just want to keep their relationship with China good so they can keep making money. Like that, I mean, that, that's what it is. Like the government, the U.S. government isn't going to punish Blizzard for putting out a statement about Black Lives Matter, but the Chinese government will punish Blizzard for putting out a statement or a platforming statement about how free Hong Kong should happen. That's why it happened. And again, I'm fine with them being a soulless, blood-sucking company, but don't pretend like you have a soul sometimes and not others. The, the hypocrisy is what the problem is. leader and at this point blizzard employees were probably feeling every decision you've made led us from bad to us shit oh boy oh fuck finally we oh, arrived to boy. present day yeah, warcraft 3 reforged i said this before i would say it i would say it one more time since we're in the video have you guys ever noticed how after they brought this game out the wild WoW players stopped asking for reforging as soon as they added this fucking game, boom, they're like, you know what? No, please, please don't reforge anything else, Blizzard. Stop it. Stop reforging. <laughs> no more reforging. We, we can't take any more reforging. Dream come Jesus. true for me. You have no yeah. idea how badly I wanted to see the custom games and multiplayer revived I think everybody did. hyped about it as if Warcraft 3 was a brand new game. Yeah, of course. This is Blizzard's latest and most damning fuck up of all. Mm -hmm. With a chance to revitalize one of the most important video games of all time. Yeah. With a chance to revive the community, get new gamers into it, into RTS games, a genre that has been dying. Blizzard left the Warcraft 3 community in a worse place than if they had never touched it. It's actually kind of funny that they somehow made it even worse than if they had done nothing. It's like usually you're kind of, you, you go and it's just like a neutral effect, but with Reforged, I really do think that they made it even worse. I'll be right back, I need to take a piss. Where are you going? Make sure to give Asmund a lot of money. Make sure to give him as much money as, uh, as possible. This fucking cinematic, what a disappointment. How can this a company so bad. actually deteriorate a product's value 18 years later? That's yeah. a topic for your business class. Especially since the game- Making an 18 year old game worse. That's impressive, man. It really is. Game still had an active community, and you tore out features and content that they've enjoyed for years. The way Warcraft 3 launched is beyond belief, yep. but illustrates just how far detached Blizzard has become from not only their past, but their fans. We didn't live up to the high standards that we really set for ourselves. No shit. When? I speculate it was released in the state it was because of shareholder pressure, something that yeah. ex-members of Blizzard have said is tampering the way the company used to operate fans were beyond upset and warcraft 3 reforged rightfully takes the crown for lowest review score on metacritic there wait really it, it's the no. worst one ever no way i i don't believe it man that's fucking incredible and uh the beta is out the beta is out there's even a parody website called Warcraft 3 Refunded that just made fun of all the bullshit Blizzard yeah, had peddled up. about this game. I won't go into every detail, I'll link some videos that do if you're interested. But here are the main points. 1. Yeah. Blatantly misleading marketing led people to believe this classic title would have all its cutscenes remastered yeah, and imagine remade. That. What we got was Servers are not that. In fact, Homeboy uh, here- I wanna just pause this real quick and show you guys. Here, actually showcases how the cinematography is less dynamic and interesting than the 2002 version. Yep, somehow. I'll hunt you to the ends of the earth if I have to. Do you hear me? To the ends of the earth! He's just standing there. It is there that your true destiny will unfold. Arthas runs after him this time, right? 
I'll hunt yeah. you to the ends of the earth if I have to. Do you hear me? To the ends of the earth! That was way fucking better, man. It's like they didn't even try. Two. Tons of core features yeah. of the game from 2002, 2003 were not re-implemented. Ranked ladders gone. If you yep. play multiplayer, prepare to get ass blasted because there is no ranking system at all. Three. Art direction was butchered. Ew. Gross. What is that? It doesn't. Oh, the thing sick. is, like, it, it doesn't look like. Uh, it, it doesn't look like Blizzard. That's really kind of the issue about it. Is it just doesn't look like Blizzard. Period. The the quality. It it just felt so stilted. Uh, I, I think that's basically what it is. Uh, it just felt really, really stilted. And yeah, Blizzard didn't make it. You're right. Blizzard did not fucking make it. And I'm not surprised, honestly. Like, why not? Yeah, fuck it. Who cares? And uh, Reddit has better... My Reddit has better art. <sighs> uh, that is... Yeah, just kind of true, man. Uh, a tier? Me? What do you mean A tier? Am I A tier? Okay. Awesome. Thanks. Okay. Um. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Original Warcraft Three does this look extremely really dated, good. but everything is yeah. way more colorful and unique, recognizable. Yeah. Four. Classic Warcraft 3 and even Starcraft 1 had a system implemented to prevent people from being dropped from matches. If your connection was interrupted or a little shaky at times, you get like a 45 second countdown timer, and if your internet was good then, the match would continue. Reforged does not have this. Being pulled early on, Law yep. was trying to go for a greedy Angel and this is the but bug, if this is right? cancelled, oh which... my. Oh damn. It's a bug. That was not a bad a, a bm a g leaving of the game yeah, this was a dude. disconnect once again i'm Pretty almost 100 sure. sure yeah I mean, lola i would yeah, never do this dude. but there's enough mana i don't, I don't need to build that's bench. a I don't fucking need bug you. man you're benched what a surprise this? it looks like another drop okay if your internet connection is yeah that was really really fucking bad i don't even know what to say about that it's complete fucking dog shit but uh you know it is what it is small indie company yeah exactly uh, no land matches. It was just complete fucking garbage, okay? And I, I want to say also, like, the reason... That's why you guys coming in the chats... This is why I don't do the streamer ratings. Because people go into other people's chats and talk shit to them for what the other streamers rate them. That's why I never did the uh, the rating the girl streamers or rating other streamers. is because I knew people would do this. Um, it's obnoxious. It is obnoxious. Um, but, like, I just want to make that clear. Uh, it... it, it it, that that is the rationalization for why I do not I, I not I do not do it. Uh, you check out the video, so let's put out. Uh, I'll look at that later, but I want to look at this right now. Isn't perfect. You will be dropped from matches Bring instantly. Yeah, yeah. I, I this happens like even in campaign missions where you get an Jesus, automatic dude. mission failed screen. Mission failed. Yeah. We'll get them next time. A delayed game is eventually good, but a rushed game is forever bad. Warcraft 3 Reforged yeah, represents right. Blizzard's complete lack of empathy or care for their older games mm -hmm. and the fans who still play them. Yep. They just pissed on their own legacy. And these problems barely scratched the surface. And now Blizzard is forced to take their sweet time fixing things that never needed to be fixed. In the pursuit of money and who knows what else, Blizzard has lost their identity. Yep. Being one of the core titans of the industry and seeing them fall so far fall lower than the likes of Bungie is just sad man the franchises they used to be known and loved for are not what they once were where they Shit, used to dude. be dedicated towards the fans now Shit, they are dedicated dude. to the shareholders it's no longer about what do the fans want but rather what can we get away with Blizzard sin that actually is a really good way to look at it. What can we get away? Can we fuck them this hard or are they gonna start complaining about it? I don't I feel like all ga all gaming companies are like this now almost. No, they no, no There's some good ones war horse is really good as far as we know Yeah, I, I feel like if a if a gaming company gets big enough it, it turns into this uh, that cash app with a hundred more gifted subs holy shit thank you very much cash app god damn thank you very much thank you thank you thank you dude 
Oh my god. Uh, I really appreciate that. Uh, Riot's the new Blizzard. I feel like all of these companies are going to have the same issue happening. Is that, you know, they they go public. The, they've got shareholders. Uh, the shareholders are making the decisions through the board. And then basically decisions are made that are not necessarily healthy for the game. They're not healthy for uh, the player base. They're just healthy for profits. That That's what matters the most. And uh, yeah, too big to succeed. I, I think that's what ends up happening. You're, you're right about that. Let me finish the video. It's almost over anyway. ...are numerous, attempting to disclose private information of their users to yeah. solve an issue that could have been fixed by better moderation. Yeah. Introducing microtransactions that undercut the core design and fun factor of a game people waited 12 years for. That was a Allowing cop. a rival company to steal the commercial rights to one of the most popular yeah. games of all time, changing WoW into something fans didn't want, failing to provide fans with the experience they had been begging for until an independent group rose up to challenge Blizzard, <laughs> yeah, some random completely guys. misreading their audience by who, building who, by the way, have more stable servers than vanilla WoW classic, or classic WoW servers. Like, you guarantee, like, if there were that many people in Ironforge and classic WoW, there'd be people going like, You know, all the time, man. It was just complete fucking garbage. And it still is. I mean, this is... Uh, I don't know how the fuck that happens, man. I really don't. ...pipe at their convention for a game their fan base has never expressed interest in. Countless tone-deaf, out-of-touch responses to valid criticism. Tossing out 800 employees like yesterday's trash during their most yep. financially successful year. Punishing people who dare speak on important political and social issues, taking a stand with China, letting internal strife and protests run rampant within the company, tarnishing yeah. their own legacy with a careless disregard for the state of Warcraft 3 Reforged. I don't know why they don't just go back and redo Warcraft 3 Reforged. Like, actual in, with Blizzard quality. I feel like they kind of owe it to the players, and, and they... Like, more so, they, they owe it to themselves. I mean, this is like a game that cemented their legacy. It's the reason why World of Warcraft exists is because of Warcraft 3. And it just seems like at a certain point, even if you lose money, it's too late. No, it's not. If they make a good game, people are going to go back and play it no matter what. It doesn't matter. Like, if they go back and they say, you know what, we don't give a fuck. We're still going to do this no matter what. People would still go back and play it. Uh, even if, it, yeah, look at the, uh, yeah, exactly. Look at No Man's Sky. I think that's a good example. Beta is updating. I am online in the beta right now. We're just waiting for the servers to come up, okay? That's what's going on. These are just the monumental blunders, the ones that have affected me the most. Yeah. If you want to see current sentiment towards Blizzard, go to their YouTube channel where the like dislike ratio Jesus. is up in the air and most videos have comments disabled. Oh my god. And if you take into consideration that Blizzard said they were going dark on Overwatch 2 information, couple that with the Diablo 4 reveal, yeah. and it just seems like a desperate attempt to shift players' focus from what a shithead company they've been to, yeah. whoa, look at these new titles. But that's just my theory. Blizzard has proven time and time again where their morals lie, and it's not with the consumers anymore. I don't think it never really even had to be with the consumers. Like, have you ever thought maybe that if you make a really good game, people are going to buy it? And if they buy the game, then you make money? Like, I I've never, I, I don't know. Like, this is like a weird fucking way of looking at things. But if you make a really good game, people buy the game. And then you've got the game. Everybody likes it. And it's good. Like, I don't see how this is like a complicated process to, to deal with. I, I don't understand that at all. I, I really don't. That's Dark Souls video. I've got another one after this we can look at while we wait I for think, the service uh, come up. Go ahead. I think we, I think the biggest problem here that I see yeah. is this is just a big problem with uh, capitalism and uh, how capitalism operates uh, solely based on the interest of uh, making money. Yeah, and I think we need to overthrow uh, capitalism at, a, at at its very core. Uh, if we did that, then we just have the same old companies making shitty games every year. I feel like it, it's just that the problem is that the 
there's not the passion behind the games and i i think that's really the problem and like the focus in my opinion the focus is on these like short-term gains and i think that's really one of the biggest differences between like the way that nintendo does does things and uh the way like blizzard and these other uh, western companies do things is that these western companies they're focused primarily on quarterly profits quarterly profits making money right now making money right now and they're not investing in a stable product in the long term whereas you have people like nintendo that are okay not going with the latest trend and doing you know everything that's exactly you know the market uh the market demands because they know that their strategy is good for the long term and i think that there needs to be more of that long-term thinking and less of the short-term thinking because the short-term thinking i feel like it alienates a lot of people and it also isn't healthy for uh, for a user base. So uh, I, I don't know, man. From software, Nintendo games are boring. Well, not everybody likes them, and that's completely okay. Uh, if you don't like it, that's fine. But there are a lot of people that do like it, and I think that's really what the uh, what the thing is. Look at CD Projekt Red. As men are doing amazing things with their titles, and they do it for the customer's best interest. Well, there's a lot of people that do that. Uh, let me finish the video first. So now do you see the decline of Blizzard? Yes. I do, but... I do. But what, my son? What happens now? Will Blizzard ever redeem themselves? I hope Will so. Will I ever be excited for another title? Yeah. That is for them to decide. It sure We can is. only wait. But if yeah. I were you, Act Man, I would let go of hope. Let go before it leads you astray like it did to me ah. yeah 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 i think like look at the look at the related video look at the, oh shit um look at the related video here the decline of gaming that's what I'm trying to get at, is I don't think that what's happened here is something that's unique to Blizzard. I, I think this is happening with all gaming companies. Like, I, I feel like, yeah, this is happening with everything. Uh, watch it. I, I might watch it. But, like, right now, I'm just, I want to talk about this one right now. Um the decline of entertainment i mean like we're waiting for the the fucking the beta to come out like i'll show you guys here so much uh, for now it's still well it's still fucking offline like you knew we were gonna do the beta like uh the beta is out like did you get that you got the beta right no i didn't get the beta bullshit you got the beta there's no way you got into alpha not the beta hey i only get into alphas you understand dude <sighs> jesus christ okay all right whatever uh, every company is just pumping out BRs. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like generally, like gaming, gaming has gone because now gaming is much more popular. And people draw this same conclusion with streaming also. They say that streaming has become more mainstream and it, it's like more about making money than it is like making a, uh, you know, a good stream or building a community. People are more focused on making money rather than anything else. Uh, you guys see what I'm saying? And uh, it, the, the update, the alpha, the beta. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So I, I don't know, man. Like, I really get disappointed with this. And it's sad to see it. But I think that everything, everything that, everything that he said is completely true. That, that's really what it comes down to. Everything that he said is completely 100% fucking true.